your ambition. Sometimes you pursue your ambition together with what looks like Christianity too, or following Jesus. But really in your heart, you are servicing yourself, you are servicing your ambitions. It is encounter that crushes your pursuits, your personal ambitions, and sets you in the, in the line of the purpose of God. Nobody can be a child of God, a follower of Jesus, except he face have encounter. If you don't have encounter, the principles of Christian faith, you will misinterpret, misunderstand the principles of Christian faith. Of course, as I'm talking to you sometimes, when the principles of the cross are preached, those who don't, who don't have encounter seems to be somehow desiring that the, the standard of the word of God will be, will be reduced. It's as if they, are, they may be desiring for a kind of a bargaining, a kind of, nah, this thing is too, too high. Can you help us? And sometimes you see even some people, they will be complaining. Even do you know that if a man don't have encounter and they want to disciple him to follow Jesus, you know how he interprets what you are doing? You are just simply leading him to suffering. He will just interpret it that you just simply hate him. That's why you are showing him this kind of, this kind of terrible thing. We need the encounter. Those of us that have had encounter, some of us have lost their first encounter. And when you lose your first encounter, you have lost your first love. The first encounter came with first love. <laughs> you know that first love? With that first love, <laughs> no you were ready to do anything again. from your heart. Year, techno is with the first encounter, you were ready to follow Jesus under any condition. When the first encounter is lost, you begin to reconsider. Praise the Lord. Let's read about a very uh, wonderful encounter in Scripture. And please follow me to Acts chapter 9. We may refer to one or two other places if we have the time. Acts chapter 9. A man who used to be evil, who used to be injurious, he said he fought the Lord. He fought this way. He, dis he, he wanted to wipe off the church. <laughs> Part of prayer we are going to be praying in this meeting when we have, when God creates space for us is that as we go, God will begin to walk with us to turn the heart of the Gentiles, the unbelievers, to turn back to the Lord. There are people who have in their heart they have decided this church something, I will wipe them off. I will do them this. But look at what happened to one of them, brother Saul. Saul that later became brother Paul. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder <laughs> against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogue. I'm reading from verse 1. Synagogue of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, hallelujah, he came near Damascus. Today, some people, this is their own near, or near Damascus. They're already near the Adam You're already in, you're near Damascus now. Something must happen to you now. That type of thing that happened to Saul must happen to you. Mama, it must happen to you. It must happen to you. It must happen to you because when it happens, nobody should be waking you, do quite do this, to go and pray this. Ah, that thing will come with something. Say, I see Johnny came to and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and had a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? I'm persecuting you because I don't know you. I'm fighting you. If I have known you, I couldn't have been fighting you. Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gods. So he, trembling and astonished, he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city and you shall be told what you must do. And the man who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground and when his eyes was opened, 
He saw no one, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus, and he was there three days without sight, and neither eat nor drank. Amen. Listen. Even if they are telling you where you are going prayers, that you have demons, you are, that you are in a woman, that you are a witch, Something will settle your matter this morning permanently. Even if you notice that you want to serve God, but there is no real love for God in your heart. As if something is withholding you. You want to move, but something is withholding you. Your matter must be settled this morning. Maybe you are even already a leader, but even to lay down your life, for those whom you lead, which is the standard of the spiritual leadership of the New Testament, if you notice that this kind of, there is this kind of struggle, this morning God will send to something for us. Now listen. You are not as terrible as Saul. So nobody is above redemption. Nobody is above encounter. Even if secretly you are very, very terrible, we don't know, nobody knows, but I want to say that once that the mercy of God locates you and hits you, bah! What happens to all the old things? Huh? Finish. I want to ask us a question. How many prayers of deliverance did Saul go? Eh? Was Paul a murderer? Did he shed blood? Did he shed blood? So I want to ask now, so how many deliverance did he go after this encounter? If we settle that one, why do you think he didn't go, he didn't need any other deliverance? Huh? Because what happened to him was sufficient. All these makeup prayers, uh, will I call it salvation makeup or circumcision being made with hands? This morning, God must settle something for us. You have been praying that prayer they said the other day they saw where they buried on Blicker Court. The other day they saw the tree they buried, uh, the tree that is uh, one economic tree they want to now go and cut in your compound. The other one they said the person that you are baptismal father, there is something. And then anytime you see that man now, what happens? Eh? He's a demon. You are mother in law. Many people are now becoming... De Some of us could not, cannot travel freely now. When they travel now, they can't feel free with people. Then they said, the way the, this woman's eyes looks, there is, I'm seeing spirit of uh, something. And because of these things, you see that such people cannot go forward. They can't go forward. Is from one prayer, to another deliverance, to another something, casting something, to another thing. Because I perceive that there is something that did not happen genuinely. When they come, they say, what dress, how are we going to be dressing? Eh? Okay, pastor, please, come and show us where my skirt will reach. Ah, please, are we together? Eh? If you didn't know where it will reach, why are you covering it with handkerchief? Who told you to cover it? Have we told sisters to be coming with handkerchief now? For a makeup? <laughs> amen. I said amen. Don't look at the next person, you. You are the target. I am the target. I want you to say I am the target. I have stayed long enough at this level. The, oh my God. Hi, where do we start? The woman, in, the woman of Samaria had an encounter that day, that day. Did she become a preacher that day? Who and who did she face? The men of the city. I want to say it's not normal for a woman to stand before men. How many women can stand before men here? Is it normal? 
Eh? It's not normal. The, what, they encounter the Lord he, she, that encountered her possessor. And she stood. All of you men, come on, come and see the man that did what? Told me. She was not. Now, look, look, look at it today. We are church members. We are, somebody is saying we need, you know, uh, Pastor, we need training on evangelism. Uh, uh, something. I didn't say we should not have training no, when it is necessary. But listen carefully. What I've noticed with all many of those trainings is just furnishing of head knowledge. So that anytime they want to demand something, you say, I, I also went to uh, something, 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 international training. I also went to something biblical uh, exegesis on uh, something standard international something. Nobody is preached to. Ah, please, are we together? If you give him a megaphone eh? to preach, if you, you say, say no, no, ah. why are you, you know not the level where we are now? Preach. Ah, we, we just stage and uh, something. About what God is showing me is worldwide. Who told uh, you to cover it? You have have you told sisters to, to be coming with handkerchief now? Salvation. For make up properly to one person, lead the person to Christ, and do a, a effective follow up. He can't. So, brethren, we must cry amen. to God this morning. This Don't look at the next channel you that are here. You are the target. After this meeting, we are going to different villages. To I am the we are moving to different schools. We are moving to various places to do what? To go and manifest. We are carrying time bomb. Wherever we enter, hallelujah, there will be what? An explosion of what we carry. By now, we should not be hearing eh, well, you know, all these guests who are seducing me, who are doing... They are seducing because you don't have anything now. Eh? Eh, some young people, they say, they are telling me to come and belong. What they say? They say, come and belong. You say, I belong already now. It's as if you are the one that doesn't belong. Or, and you need to belong. You say, ah, do like this. Then you say, J-E-S-U-S. -E he do the assign. Maybe just do. He said, which one? Cartel or... Huh? He said, it's okay. <laughs> J-E-S-U-S. Jesus! And maybe the power of God, it may please God to use his power to do what? Wham! <laughs> Shout hallelujah! <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know why you are still cold. Listen. The world, they are already confused. They are like the... Do you remember the time of Saul and Jonathan? When everybody was so afraid. Jonathan called his armor bearer. Is it Jonathan and the armor bearer? They said, come, come, come. And they had a, a sharp rock. They called Moses and said, they have to pass through. They said, if we hear this, we'll say, come to us. We will show you something. We know that God has delivered them. Into. So they moved and they passed through the rock. They come. Those unbelievers say, come to us, we want to show. You know what the unbelievers are saying? We are tired, come to us with gospel. But we are in the hiding. Something must happen to us this morning in the name of Jesus. If you have lost your first encounter, you must cry to God. A man that doesn't carry fresh encounter, preaching love to him is a waste of time. If you send him for love, of his station. He will do like Gehazi. He carry a rod. When he reach there, he just carry it and place on the person. The pastor said, she come and see you. We didn't see you on Saturday. What happened? We didn't see you in the Bible. Store. So what happened? The man will say, all of you, you are not serious. So. You are not asking me how, how, how I'm feeling, how you don't, I didn't eat on Monday. And on Saturday, I ate half meal. And they're asking me about f uh, fellowship. He said, eh. The man will say, there's no love in that church. Oh. You know, you just carried rod that is not your life. The go and place. Are you following me? So when the man complain, complain, he said, nah. After to I in a kusong But let me go back. You carry a rod again. 
to go and tell the pastor that sent me. When you go to pastor, pastor, now I went there. Oko tom na now. The man said that uh, no love. Even that you are safe, massive. You need God. <laughs> he said this. He said this. Well, I've come to bring back the rod, the assignment you gave me. What happens? If we don't carry fresh, hi, a man with fresh oil, after the whole complaint, say the person will be asking the Lord, so Lord, how do I go? Now? How do I go? Now? The Lord may say, kneel down and weep before the soul. Kneel down and weep before the soul. A man with encounter. Because a person cannot stand there and say, if you go to visit somebody, uh, if the person said this is a uh, weep. And you can't even weep by your, by, your, by your own arrangement. So, do you see Saul? This thing that happened to Saul here, please. After this thing, what happened? What next? Saul joined the disciples. They were scared. Barnabas introduced him and did some measure of work. After that, Arabian wilderness. Three years. For all the furnitures of the old life. Some of us now, the language of old life have not, is there still there? The language of old language, they are still there. Anytime they press you, press you, press you. Nah, yeah. Uh, everybody should be careful though, because um, it's not because I'm carrying this Bible now. I was trained in judo. I was trained as a karate. I also joined Niger Delta Militants for three years. So everybody should be very, very careful. You know what they're simply saying? Huh? I changed line, nothing happened to me. Huh? That's what they're saying. Or that thing that happened was not guided, so I lost it. Let me say something. Christianity, following Jesus goes with a lot of challenges, but I want to tell you one thing about following Jesus. There is the joy in us and the peace that passes all understanding, that keeps us at every point, no matter what the challenge may be. Once those things are no longer there, following Jesus will be very, very unbearable. Very painful, very unbearable. Now, Look at what happened to Saul. Look at Galatians chapter 1. Galatians 1. Galatians chapter 1. I want to just read that. I think it should be one verse. Galatians chapter 1. Chapter 1. Uh, one verse. Uh. Somebody read the second and last verse. Okay, sorry, I will read from here because... Uh, is being recorded. But they were he sorry. Verse three eighteen. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter. I reminded him with and remained with him 15 days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Now concerning the things which I write to you, indeed, before God, I do not lie. Afterward, I went into the region of Syria and Cilicia and was unknown by faith to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they were hearing only, he who formerly persecuted us now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy. And what was the result? Let's read verse 24 together. I don't know whether some of us really turn their Bible to where we are reading. No? That thing we read in, in Acts chapter 9 resulted in people glorify God. Sorry, glorifying God in Paul. He said, this man that has been wicked, injurious, evil, murderer. 
He said they didn't hear anything again except they were hearing that this man that used to destroy us, what happened? He is now preaching the faith. Now, you will begin to ask ourselves, when did Saul even start to preach? Go back to that Acts chapter 9. Go back to Acts chapter 9. Look at verse 20. Immediately, what happened? He preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. Then all who heard were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those who call on this name in Jerusalem and has come here for that people so that he might bring them bound to the chief priest. Amen. When the soul start to preach? Huh? Three days after encounter. That encounter led him to unplanned all fast. The one they used to call dry fast. He entered without planning. With blindness. Three days. When he came out, <laughs> as he comes out, baby, Hello, man. I've been the friend. He just looked at him and said, Look, you need Jesus. He said, What is it? He said, what? Yes, when did this one start? He said, I don't know the day it starts. Three days ago, I met him. Do you know the Jesus that Paul preached? Paul must have preached. He said, You know me now. Last week, I think we were together in a synagogue of uh, wherever we enter. Hallelujah! We were there. There will be what? You know, I was An explosion. I was the one what between the garments of those who destroyed the other person, Stephen. I hope you remember. He was sharing the, the, his experience. If all of us here, if we are really born again, and we are still born again, because we explained something yesterday. Somebody may be born again, but he's no longer Somebody may, maybe he, he, he he's no longer born again. If we are really, we are still, still born again. Huh? If we are still born again. We are not talking of gentle religion. Gentle managing, knowing how to package yourself, to carry yourself up and down, and put the label of Jesus on it. Of course, you can manage, once the thing act, when you act, the thing will come out and show that this Jesus is not there. Now, if we carry Jesus now properly and begin to share our experiences, students are sharing their experiences. Those that have been in court but are free now, they are serving the Lord. They are just sharing. The, they don't need to be quoting the whole Bible. Just their experiences. They, it will make a whole lot of difference. Young girls who are really converted. It's not those that will be talking of Jesus. And those that are talking to us they are still suspecting that even then they say talking to them are not free. Do you know there is a way unbeliever dictates that what you are saying is not in you? Huh? You don't know. Sometimes they throw a question. You don't know why they are throwing that question. They have looked at you, they say, ah, please, I just want to know something like this. Is it possible? You say, yes, yes, it's possible. They looked at you and said, I know why I ask. Go on in your preaching. Sometimes it is traders. They have noticed that they are covetous. It's not you shouldn't do business. You should do business. They know where you are so much after money. And sometimes they throw something and say, can somebody be really free from covetousness and still be a child of God and do business and even make money and millions? He said, of course, now. Nah. Don't you see me? He said, you. He <laughs> said, you. He said, come, come, uh, Magnus, we are not going to talk of it today because we are together with you in this line. We know you. That we know you is pregnant with not even twins. Eh? With many things. Who among the students can be so bold to face other students and share their personal testimony? Maybe the person did more practice the last result, uh, sorry, exams. And it's coming today and say, you know, the last result, I did my practice, you know, we were together, eh, but everything. So that's why I'm repeating now. Now I'm repeating, eh, yes, yeah, something happened to me and the Lord 
put it in my head that I should repeat. That's why you see me repeating. I am not repeating by compulsion of anybody. Something I... That le, the life I carried yesterday is not the one I carried now. The one I carried now made me to know that I should repeat. To have a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. How many housewives in our different residence can demonstrate Jesus, can show Jesus in their character? It's only through encounter. If there is no encounter, you cannot give what you don't have. This morning, as we look up to heaven, as we look up to heaven, when our brother was leading us in prayer, he talked about carrying a burden. Carrying a, do you know that you can't have genuine burden unless you come to your verse 30 of Matthew chapter 11. You must move from chapter, sorry, verse 28 to 29 before you talk of burden. Genuine burden of verse 30. To carry a burden is a process. To carry a burden is not just you come to somebody and say, let's pray for missions and they're just saying, hey Lord, send me oh! It's not in shouting. There is a process of dealing. Process of circumcision with the dealings of the word of God as a sharp knife. Cutting off everything of self and flesh. And the things of Jesus remaining. Hmm. That's when God will say, my yoke is easy, and what happened? My burden is light. And without that burden, what you'll be doing is what you'll be doing is religion. But I'm trusting God that after this meeting, God, by the grace of God, must surely succeed with our lives in the name of Jesus. As you want to pray, three days, so I'll start a preach. He started, in fact, if we read further, if you go, you read further. He said he started confounding people. <laughs> he started talking to them very bold. He said, this thing we have been doing, this religion is wrong. He says, it's Jesus. Like my brother said, care about in care He said, I don't know about your video with the matter. The matter will know video already. Do you know that this thing did not stop? Huh? Didn't stop. For Paul. As far as Acts chapter 21, when the disciples were crying for Paul because he was about to go to Jerusalem to suffer, what did he say? What do you mean by, by, by breaking my heart and something? I'm not ready to go to Jerusalem to suffer. You are talking of suffering when I'm, I'm, I've got my heart ready for what? To die. In, in fact, the last letter that Saul, sorry, Paul wrote at that time was 2 Timothy chapter 4. That was in that 2 Timothy chapter 4. Do you know that I was reading a kind of I read a, a kind of commentary that commented that when Paul was it's been assumed that when Paul was writing that letter, he had seen the soldiers that we execute him. They were standing already. He was writing the letter to Timothy. He said, I have fought the good fight, I have kept the faith. From hence, now I am ready to be what poured out like again, drink offering. He kind of he was just saying that after writing this and send it, the men that will cut my head, they are what they are ready. And me too, I'm also what you are not talking, you are not talking. Hey, hey, hmm. how many of us have read a book? John Fox, book, you know, I used to sometimes refer, to, most times refer to it. How many of us have read the book, the, the John Fox book of Matthias? Can you wave if you have read that book? Wave, wave your hand. Whether you read it, uh, the, whether you use the hard copy or you read uh, this, can you wave? Huh? Wave your hand very well. This is not secret. Some. Okay, so may read parts or something. <laughs> you know, see, listen. If you are doing this Christianity, we are doing here. That when we gather like this and people are saying, the women will be saying, Why? 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 
kitchen. Near your corner kitchen. Kitchen is good. But listen, when you read that book, you will see other women like you. In fact, they were telling one sister and said, Sister, consider your baby and the recant. That to recant means to say, This Jesus I believe. Uh, I, I, I no longer believe. Because they will persuade them. <laughs> she was, I think she was breastfeeding a, a baby. They said, Why not because of your baby? You know, they were bringing consideration. You know what she did? She carried the baby and gave the person. If this baby is the, the something, please hold the baby. I'm ready. The day they carried some, some people to go and kill, I think they were to burn them. They used to tie them in the stake and burn them. They did not execute all of them that day. One sister said, hi, that she thought she don't know why they postponed this thing that she was not also killed yesterday because she have already made up her mind how she will enter glory. And these people have come and postponed this thing. I don't know whether are you following? You are not talking to her. I see when you come and maybe you are doing this Christianity, they just come and fold hand, they just do like that. It, hmm. Something must happen to us in the name of Jesus. God must come. If we are Christians, we must be Christians. We must be Christians. All this something we are doing, we say it's gentle something. Some of those, there is nothing there. There is nothing there. I believe there is a, this encounter comes with positive, being positively radical for Jesus. I believe, I've not seen any man carrying an encounter that is not positively radical for Jesus. I've not seen one. Even if the person seems to be quiet, there is something he carries that affects people. In that quiet mood, or to call it, maybe it's called it quiet mood, there is something critical he carries. Anything you come here and they are just, I saw some people are just, uh, are just doing church like this. They just do this. They say they are not talking to sinners. The sinners are too, too. How can, how can he talk to this lady now who is uh, almost naked? The other one wearing trousers. The best thing is what? Let me just walk JJ and they escape quietly out of this dirty world. To where? To where? Where is he escaping to? To heaven. Uh -huh. uh, see? And if he thinks he's escaping to heaven, he didn't know that his master saved him and commissioned him and said, go into the world and do what? Preach. That heaven you are hoping for. Remember that if you are not carrying this life and preaching, you are living in disobedience. I had something in the last meeting we had in the body of Christ. I think they quoted Carre. Is it William Carre? They said, they said a great, the great commission is not a consideration, it's a command to be obeyed. I note it. It's not, it's not an option. There is not something you say, well, uh, whether I win souls or not, whether I preach or not, whether I'm radical about it or not, uh, I just want to just know how I will just carry myself and just quietly escape the world and do what? And go to heaven. Which heaven is like that? Is it the heaven you are preparing on the one that Jesus is preparing? The people that went to that heaven, didn't you see their footprints? Didn't you see the lifestyle they lived here? Those of them that were young people, youths, how they lived. Jesus since he was a youth. He died a youth. And all the people who served the Lord, women, men, preachers, they are in the Bible. Check their lifestyle. Check how they lived. The Lord told me a few months ago, he said, I had a voice, he said, God is waiting for the church to arise. He's waiting for the church to arise. And to be particular, he's waiting for the Redeem Bible Church to arise. And even you and me, he's waiting for us to arise. We must ar Something must happen to us and cause us to arise from our sleeping and slumber in the name of Jesus. We cannot follow Jesus in the way of that kind of escape. Escape to heaven. What kind of escape is that? 
Those that ran this race before us, they didn't do like that. I told you that a man in a village, no, in the next our the next village that owned, when he goes to cut palm uh, palm fruit, when he climbed with his rope to some measurable height, he will from there begin to preach. Begin to preach. That was how my mother noticed the man. Because she also used to do work for my mother. My mother said, You I have my son is is yeah, is doing this thing you are doing, something like that. A kind of you have a brother in my house. This I'm now adding this. This year madness, I also have one one mad person. Eh? Who is mad like you? And can I tell us? If you don't do this thing like mad people, look, when we talk of this madness, people think we are not we are quoting of the scriptures. Second Corinthians five thirteen. Check it in your scriptures. If we are mad about this thing, God knows. If we are in our right mind, it is for God. Check it. Or it is for a good something like that. Check your scriptures. Mad for God. You look insane. They say your own is too much. Our brethren from Owenimbo go back. Go everywhere. Visit the chief. Be respectful. Use everything as platform. Pay him a nice homage if you have gifts. Go. Pay him Jesus saves. You have saved us. I think you have a brother here from uh, is it Odanimbo or Nimbo? That yes, they used to have traditional type Abi. Yes, you have access. Go and share your experience. How Jesus encountered you and gave you a Bible. I know when we met you the other time, that time, you carried some, I don't know what they call it, I can so many things. <laughs> many beads and many things and many something. But now Jesus has removed it and give you a Bible. Abi, he said you will, you will go by this Bible. Now, carry the same Bible and meet the people of your kind. I said, come and meet the man that have done what? Told me all that I did. The one that changed my life. Come and see Jesus. You don't need long story. For all that about long story, you use your dialect. You are not going to go to England to go and learn something, to go and do this. You are carrying the Jesus already. Fellowship. If something is growing cold, you have to tell the Lord this morning, Lord, Lord, refire me, refire me. I, I really want to go. But there is this coldness I'm sensing this morning. Lord, something must happen to me. Brother, you see that in somehow. But let me go back. You, you come from me here. Where are the students? You go and tell the pastor that Where are the students? We see you. Many when you go to the pastor, pastor. just misbehaving. Nah, yes, when well, we call ourselves that we are not misbehaving, we'll misbehaving is not enough. That I'm not misbehaving is not that, enough. Uh, no love. Even that. I need to take another step. I'm not God. misbehaving. And you too, you will stop be misbehaving. <laughs> they say, is it by force? I say, yes, it's by he force. Said this, he said this. Your yeah, soul belongs to Jesus. The rod. He paid the price. What happens? You belong to him. He said, look at him. If this salvation is it by force, yes, you must be saved. Some of our young girls who are Beautiful. When people look at you, they acknowledge the mercy of God in, can I say, handcrafting you. Eh? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Handsome. But your nose, maybe they consider your own better than my own. And their completion. And now, this thing is attracting people around you. They're just coming, they say, uh, nee, I just wanted to say, wanted to do what? God bless you. Do what? Say, eh, 
You love me? Jesus loves you better. He said, please, I don't want that born again thing here. I mean I will take you places. Next week, I'm going to be traveling to Dubai. After Dubai, what's the next place? Qatar. We say, Dubai, Qatar. Me, I'm in heaven already. Oh, you don't know that I'm in heaven? If you are in Jesus, you are in heaven, no? In case if you don't know. If you are not in Jesus, you are in hell. The only thing is that you have not entered hell fire. Listen, if you are not in Jesus, your life is in hell. Your marriage is in hell. Things around you, all of them are in hell. When you check, even sometimes, when you relate with people, they say, see, this, this marriage is already, I'm experiencing hell in this. Have you had people say like that? Ah, you are not talking to me. Ah. I'm even some Christians, I'm experiencing hell in this marriage. Yes, when the marriage is not in Jesus, it's in hell. When the life is not in Jesus, okay, it could be zero me bazia bakane kuzu. And obu ne ima ya, obu ne ima. If obu ne ima, hi, you can't remain there. I think even the most wicked person should not wish his enemy hell or hell fire. Those are brethren that came from Amudo. Go back. Go to their houses. Help them in their farm work and give them Jesus. This meeting is not a meeting to we have Mark another December 18, 2020. Marking what? The days are getting tough. But we are carrying Jesus in us. If you are not born again this morning, you will have opportunity. As you want to pray now, you will come here and say, Lord. Please, I want to be born again. Stop asking questions. How can somebody know whether he's born again? Like now, if I'm having good, good dreams, am I born again? Please. The truth is that you are not born again. All those questions you're asking shows that you are not born again. Uh, like if somebody is just good, no, just very good, there's no, don't take people's things, I don't have, no wahala for anybody. No, uh -huh. the Bible says no man is good, but now you are looking <laughs> the way here. So, and they are looking for somebody that you assess whether you are born again. Please listen. Have you seen any born, any human being that is born that goes to people and say, Am I born? Have anybody come to you any day and say, uh, Pastor, please check for me whether I am born? If somebody comes to you and says, Check for me whether I am born, what will you say? What will you say to that person? Huh? Psychiatry is straight. So when you say, check for me whether I am born, it shows that something is wrong. As we want to pray, God will handle something with our heart this morning. An encounter must take place this morning. Those that have lost their encounter, a second encounter must happen to you. Whether it's second or another, it must happen. Because that's the hope. Please, let's pray. Let's pray. We will stand up now because we have sat for like some few minutes. At least you have gained some measure of strength. When we sit, we stand, we walk. We sit again, we stand, we walk. We go out, we come in, we find pastures. This morning, brothers and sisters... I want to believe that each time the word of God comes to us, God is looking for honest people. God has no business with hypocrites. He loves sinners. But when he made the Pharisees say, Woe well unto you hypocrites. Because you pretend to carry what you don't have. And instead of saying, I don't have, you seem to, to, to just say that you have. We are praying. We are praying. We are praying. The first set of people, those who are saying to the Lord, I need to be born again first. That one too happens by encounter. And the word of God has come to you this morning. The other people, they are born again, they had encounter, 
but they have lost it. If you have to be honest this morning and say, Lord, I have lost my own. I have lost my own. The fire of evangelism and prayers I used to carry, I don't see it again. I now sit to analyze and to, to consider and to do this. I find that now that I don't have the, I don't have the inner, the kind of inner burning to, to reach to an unbeliever. There is nothing inside me who is, which is you no know, a kind of steering from inside. When I stay with unbelievers, I am normal. Lord is not normal. I am thine, O oh Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, draw me nearer. Near a blessed Lord to the cross, we are down. Draw me near, draw me near, near, near a blessed Lord to thy precious splendid If you like, you can respond to God as God leads you to respond to Him. If you will beg God and say, Lord, I have lost something. There is something I used to carry. There's prayer. Prayer is Prayer is Lord, I no longer see that in him. I no longer see that. Even when I stay with sinners night, I just talk business with them, talk money with them, talk politics, talk about Nigeria, talk about the presidency, talk about many things. I hardly remember to preach. Lord, 
Do you know that our tongues, our tongues, as we pray in tongues, do you know that if we are growing, sometimes the tongues changes as the Spirit of God brings utterance. with coldness we may have come here with 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 confusion you will not go with confusion you will not continue in confusion hey riba kamaruba kasanta labaya selima kuba salabaya kamashari bakaya selima kasoka talabaya ruma kasenta le kamarabaya kamasakata le kesoka talabaya Se posinte ke ma sheke tele baraka masaya Rosi ka ma kure baka masaya ka sakata Le ke toka posi ka ma kaya baraka sa Ori ma kasente ya kana masanda ya kama robo sharebaya Going to say, do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something fresh in my heart. Today, right now, do something new in my heart. Something wonderful in my heart. Something wonderful in my heart. Something new in my heart, something precious in my heart, something wonderful in my heart. Oh Lord, something wonderful, Mother. Something tangible, something beautiful, something marvelous, something permanent. Oh Lord, I cannot do. Without you, cannot do without you. Cannot do without you. Oh Lord, I 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 cannot that they need fresh in their mind. The first thing is, how many people agree that when they watch their life with the word of God, and maybe how you started, and where you are now, you can agree with God and say, this word of God came for me. Lord, I need encounter. I need something fresh. You are in the choir and it's very good. <laughs> Even those in the kitchen. <laughs> Encounter comes with a kind of fire. <laughs> Don't look at anybody. Do you know sometimes why you need to leave your seat sometimes? It's because sometimes they are sitting.